All right, so I'm back, and um, as you can see beside me, I've already worked up two looms. It took a little bit longer from when I stopped the last video to, um, to upload. And so in the meantime, I had things to do, and so I worked up these two looms, and I have already wound on the warp. But I am going to show you, um, finish up showing you how I... Um, wind the warp, I'm going to show you how I tie the warp, how I chain the warp together, and then I'm going to pause, stop the video, upload this part, and then I'll come back and show you how I'm able to wind this entire warp onto my back beam without any help, and it's the same process that I use to wind this, which is a relatively short warp, um, or if I would wind a warp that was many meters long, like five meters long, I actually have um, at three warping boards. I have um, this warping board, which is about 4.5 meters um, long. When I have it stretched like that, I can get about five meters out of it. I have another warping board um, that I think is about seven or so meters long. And then I have another really big warping board that is about, I think it's like 13 meters or so long. So, um, yeah, you can, warping boards are really useful, and I'll try to continue doing this, just like doing videos, um, quick and dirty, <laughs> and just putting them up there, and um, yeah, I, 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 I'm going to try this, and y'all let me know what you think in the comments. Um, it's easier for me just to put the camera up and shoot while I'm working than to get super technical and like make sure that everything is perfect and my background's up and then go back and spend another two hours editing. So I'm just going to put it up here and hopefully it'll be a blessing, it'll be a benefit to the weaving community and it'll be, um, I'll be able to put it up there for you and I don't have the stress of trying to do all the post editing work and I apologize. Um, you know, I, I like doing that part, but if I want to be able to put more content out, which I do because I'm always doing something, and I think, wow, I'd love to share this um, with the weaving community, but I have, I'm kind of busy, and so I get overwhelmed with the thought of editing, whether that be for my blog or for um, YouTube. It's just like I, I, get, I have too much to do. So, um, I hope we'll, we'll take the trade off. We have the quick and dirty videos for me putting out more content, and I hope that's a blessing to you. So, anyway, without further ado, let me get up from here. I'm going to finish warping this last loom that I have, uh, and then I'm going to tie my warp off. I'm going to take it off the warping board, and then I'm going to upload this video, and then I'm going to come back. Well, it depends on how long this ends up being, but then I'm going to probably come back and show you how I actually use the warp chain and wind it onto the back beam of the, um, of the loom without needing to have additional help. So, without further ado, let's do this. This is probably cut my head off, but that's fine. You still hear me talking. So, I've come down, so you can't see it here, but I've warped across my, my um, reed, my heddle, and I did a 10... It is 10 inches in the heddle, and I have two more um, slots to do. So I'm going to do these last two slots. And so like I showed you in the first video, I'm just going to, you know, go around that apron rod like you normally would. But the special thing that I'm doing is I am just um, going, I'm working around, and then I come back and I work back to the same path. And then I come back to the... To here, I pull some some um, work yarn up, and then I grab with my um, heddle hook, and I do it one more time. This is the last pass. All right, and then we're going to come back around, and we're done. And so I'm just going to come get some scissors and cut my Warp yarn, tie a knot on this end to secure it. All right, and I'm done. Now, what do you do? I've seen 
Um, people do this all different ways. I'm just going to show you what I do, and I've been pretty successful at doing it, and that's why I'm sharing it. <laughs> I try, yes, I, I, I try to share things, or when I'm writing, I try to write things that, you know, I know that it's going to work. All right, so what I'm doing now is I'm just winding. It, this is um, just some cotton um, peaches and cream yarn. And I am, I should get my scissors. I am just winding it between my thumb and my pinky. And just to get some length, and I'm just going to cut it. And these little short pieces are what I'm going to use to tie off my warp. Now, the reason why you tie off your warp, if you are familiar with warping on a warping board and then indirectly taking your warp from your warping board to your loom, this will be quite familiar for you. But for those of you who are not familiar with warping on the warping board, um, this is why we're doing it. So, right now the warp is under tension. And if I were just to take this off, it would just go haywire and all get messed up. All the beautiful, this is so beautiful, all of the strands are, are under tension and they're all perfectly um, straight. And so we want to keep that straightness. We want to keep it neat and together. And so what, what I'm doing is I'm just wrapping, I usually just wrap the little cords, these cords I just cut, around about twice. I pull it tight. I tie just a simple knot. And then I tie a bow, and that's it. That's what I do. People do different ways. That's what this is the way I do it. So I tie one about um, right out or right between that initial peg. I'm not sure what my camera's doing, but I'm down here at the peg, and I'm tying a knot, like maybe just right above that last peg that I wrapped it around at the beginning. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm now. Here's the thing. You have your guide thread on, and especially if you're going to be using it again, or like me tonight, I warp three looms. I leave, I make sure not to tie my guide thread into my into my warp um, chain, all right? Or I don't want to tie that in there. So you just want to make sure you pull it down so you don't get it caught in there. And you're going to wrap, or this is what I do, I wrap it around twice. I tie it, pull it really tight. You don't want this your warp sliding around anywhere. And then you're going to tie, I tie a knot, I tie a bow, and I'm going to do a video and show you how I warp my Becca heddle before I put it on my loom, just to let you see. Um, because this works, this, this process of using a warping board with a loom works on a variety of different looms. It, I, I would say it will work on any rigid heddle loom, um, because it's just like, the concept is the same as you would if you were using a warping peg, you're just... Um, I'm just using a warping board to give you a little bit more length. And if you like, if you're like me and you like to use thinner warps, then you know, and, and you can put a you can put a lot on to a rigid head loom. And I'm going to show you what I do because I put paper between all the layers, and I found that I can wind on super long warps, putting paper through all the layers. And so I'm just going to show you what I do, how I do that. And you always want to put paper through your layers because it makes it so that um, you don't get cigars. <laughs> you know, you know what? we don't want cigars when we are weaving. And what that is, is when you have a really big fat center in your warp and your sides are kind of narrow because your warp has built up in the center and the sides are just, are even worse, but they are just like kind of feathered out on either end, your tension is going to be very, very not good. And so you don't want that. And that's why we put paper or sticks or cardboard or um, a variety of things between our warp. All right, so I have tied, and you'll see I tie at my front beam. I tie um, a little ways forward, and I tie in the middle between the, where my um, switchbacks are. You can tie as few or as many. Some people only put maybe uh, not every other switchback. It's totally up to you. I, I I might overdo it a little bit, but 
it's okay. You know, you do what makes you happy. After you try this a couple of times, you'll see what, what you're happiest with. So now, once I have my warp tight, I only need one more of these. Once I have my warp tight, I'm going to come over here, and here's a beautiful thing. I'm going to pop this off the first peg, right? And you see, you could see, right? You probably saw the tension come out of it, the slack pain, you know? You see how this is. It's much different than when it's pulled so, so taut. So now I have it like this. Now, if I'm going to do it like tonight, I'm going to do this like right now. So I actually don't need to do the chain it off because I'm about to use this. But if I were going to be going away, not that anything is going to necessarily happen because these are tied. But hey, if you got cats or kids or anybody else that might mess with your stuff, you may just want to do this just to save yourself the stress of, you know, someone untying your knots. And what, we're, what I'm pretty much doing is just finger crocheting the warp, grabbing the whole warp, and just working from the tip. Oh, let me do it again so you can see what I did. All right, so the bottom has a loop in it, and I leave that loop in there. I don't cut it until I've already warped the whole, I've wound everything onto the warp, and then I'll cut it. Um, I'll tell you about that a different day. I'm going to do, I'll do a video next time I do it. Sometimes I will... Um, I will chain it, then I'll cut my th stra strands, and I will thread the rest of my holes before I wind on, and then other times I'll do what I'm going to do this evening, which is wind all the way on and then thread my holes. There's no, it doesn't matter one way or the other. Um, I, I, I'm sure that there's a reason why I do one way or the other sometimes, but uh if I'm doing, yeah, that's when I usually do it. If I'm going to be doing double um, weaving with two heddles, then I usually will thread my slot, my holes, after I have wound on, just so that I make sure that everything is straight, um, so that I don't have any tangles behind my heddles when I'm double weaving. But when I'm single weaving, and just or weaving with one heddle, not two, I will um, thread my holes after I've wound everything onto the back beam. Yeah, I knew there was a reason why I did that. So anyway, so I'm just going to chain this up. And I'm actually going to chain it and get pretty close to my heddle. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take another piece of scrap yarn or yarn that I cut. I'm going to fold it over and make a loop. I'm going to put the loop through that that this back part, the, the back end of, a, of the crochet chain, right? And catch it, right? So I'm, I've caught it. And then I'm just gonna open up the two sides, wrap it in front, and then tie just a, a, a simple knot and a bow. What this does is that it keeps this, this warp chain from un, untying on me, and it secures this, um, it just keeps everything staying neat. So I could do this and I could leave this if I were going to be doing, you know, if I had a whole bunch of, of looms to warp up for a class, then I could do it like this and get it all done. And there's no worries for me that something may happen while I'm doing another loom. So, you know, like I said, you don't have to do this part, but um, I do because I like to be careful, yes. All right, so now what I'm doing is I'm just unloosing this, um, my guide string from my apron rod. I'm probably gonna save this. I think that the warp that I put on these three looms is what I'm gonna be using for this project that I'm doing, but just in case I need to re-warp my loom, I have my guide string, which will make sure that I get a warp that is the same length of the warp that I just put on tonight, on tonight for these three looms. So what I'm going to do is, depending on how long this video has gone, I'm going to either upload it to YouTube and um, kill some time doing something while it uploads and come back finally to show you how I wind this on, or I will pause it and resituate my loom and the camera so you can see how I wind this on. So. Hold the thought, <laughs> um, and um, yes, you, uh, we'll, we'll see you in a minute, all right? But most likely I'm probably going to stop the video, and when I come back, I will have 
change my loom so that I can um, wind on the warp and I'll show you how I get that done. All right, until then, keep smiling. <laughs>